fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high old silver, the Lone Ranger. <laughs> cattle were driven north to the railroad towns from the southern Texas ranches, the Lone Ranger led the fight for law and order in the range country. Rustlers and hostile Indians attacked the honest ranchers constantly, and it was only through the strength and courage of the masked rider of the plains that peace and security were brought to the frontier. Return with us now to those thrilling days when the West was young. From out of the past come the thundering hoof beats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Reed Gomez, the tomahawk foreman, was to be tried. The courtroom in Leadville was crowded. Everyone knew it was the Lone Ranger who had obtained the evidence against him. But so far, Benjamin Steele, who had said nothing for or against his former employee, would he stand by him or condemn him? The question remained unanswered, and the judge rapped for order. This is Jim Carrey versus Reed Gomez. Get all the witnesses lined up, Sheriff? Yes, sir. Who's that? Benjamin Steele. I own this trial is illegal. What do you mean by that? This was the charge. Oh, you ought to know that. Oh, he's in the water hole. And who brought the charge? Why, uh, Jim Carrey here. He's got no right to bring charges. The water hole is on my land. If I don't want to bring charges, nobody can. Now, well, wait a minute there. He poisoned my water hole, too. You just figure he did. You got no proof. Well, he must have. You got any evidence? No, we caught him at your water hole, but and I, I said... Two Jews. I'm the only one who can bring charges. Your Honor, you know how all this happened. Uh, Reed was really trying to kill off my cattle. He sent word to me that I could use Steele's water hole. I got that message after he poisoned me. Uh, hold on, man. Reed uh, give you that message himself? It was Ted Bailey brought it, but Reed told him to. You have any proof of that? I got Ted's word. Is that enough, Your Honor? Not unless there was witnesses. Yeah, Steele's right about the legal part of this case, Carey. He's the only one who's got the right to bring charges. But I want to tell him here and now it's his duty to do it. I get an answer to that. Well, out with it. Reed's worked for me for a long time. He's a good foreman. And I need him to run the tomahawk. I'll admit he made a mistake, but most of us do every now and then. Not even the Lone Ranger would stop an honest man from getting a second chance. An honest man? That's what I said. Reed figured you ought to sell your land to me for your own good. You've got sort of options about it. He just figured out this little trick to make a change of mind. It was crooked. It was wrong, I'll admit. But I'll answer for two for him, for to everybody here in this courtroom and everybody on Tomahawk Basin. He won't try anything like it again. That's why I'm not bringing charges against him. Your Honor, I'm caught on you to throw this case out of court. I object. Well, rightly speaking, there is no case. Objection overruled. Release the president. <laughs> Court adjourned. That's you, senor. You will not be sorry for what you have done today. I do that, Reed. Sure you do. And every small rancher here knows it, too. <laughs> you think you put one over on us, but you haven't. Reed isn't going to jail, Terry. The Lord Ranger didn't accomplish anything by getting him arrested. Oh, yes, he did. He's forced you to put your cards on the table. You can't pretend to be friendly to us anymore. You were trying to drive us all out of the basin. And from now on, it's war. <laughs> Carry told the truth. Uh, tomahawk outfit plenty strong. So is all the other outfits put together. The steel is smart. Instead of breaking the law, he'll use it. He'll use his money to force the small ranchers into bankruptcy. He's got to frame them for rustling and send them to jail. Him plenty bad. But he won't attack them openly until everything else has been tried. 
We must make sure his plan fails, Kimasabi. Ah. Uh, Afterwards, when he's turned his back on the law, then we'll have a chance to put him where he belongs. And make him pay. For everything. For every head of cattle, for every ranch he's stolen. And most of all, for something we can't prove. You mean Black Arrow? Yes. He'll pay for his treason. The thing I like about it is that it's legal. Legal? Yes. <laughs> the other ranch is killing with the round yeah. They'll just about start it. It is? Yeah, it's the same with the tomahawk. You've got to finish first, that's all. You haven't got nearly enough men. Oh, it is, and you're real plenty. That's what I'm planning. Let Whitey take charge for a few days, and you head down to San Antonio. Hire every man you can find to get back here by the end of the week with a hundred at least. A hundred? At least. And as many more as you can find. Well, he's local, senor. <laughs> How many men would you need to drive a trailer here to 50,000 to market? Well, we will not have 50,000 here. 5,000 maybe, but 50,000, no. 50,000, yes. Senor. Well, what's more, they have to get to market before any other cattle from the basin. You'll have to move fast, Braden. Oh, I am beginning to see. If you sell him 50,000 here, the buyers will have enough. <laughs> they will offer little or nothing for the other cattle from the basin. I'm hoping it'll be nothing. It'll be a bad year for the small ranchers. They won't have enough money to run until next year. They'll have to borrow. And if they can't borrow, they'll have to sell out at my price. <laughs> it's so simple. <laughs> you will lose some money yourself, of course. 50000 here at one time. You cannot hope for a top price. I can afford to lose this money to get the land I want. <laughs> See, I congratulate you. Don't bother to do that yet. You've got to move fast if it's going to work. You get down to San Antonio and hire those men pronto. <laughs> Great ton of steel wouldn't have bothered to get him out of jail if we didn't have some work for him. That's right. It's strange that he should be leaving the basin just when the roundup is getting underway. Um, what do you think, Kimasabi? I don't know. I don't like the looks of it, though. You better follow him, Tano. Maybe him go a long way. Well, it doesn't matter. Follow him wherever he goes. Follow him until you find out what he's up to. Uh, time to do that. And then when you learn anything, time to come back plenty fast. Good luck, Kimasabi. Uh, get him up, scout. <laughs> One night, a week later, a lone ranger reigned up in front of Jim Carrey's ranch house. A great yellow moon was rising above the western hills that rimmed the basin. The distant lowing of the cattle and an occasional whinny from the mustangs in the corral were all that disturbed the silence of the night. The range country seemed at peace. But as he climbed the steps of the ranch house, the lone ranger's face was grim beneath his mask. Steady, big fella. Good evening, Carrie. Well, I'll be dog. The lone ranger. Come on in. Thank you. Too bad Abby and Ted aren't here. They've gone to a shindig at the bar M. I was afraid you might be there, too. Nope, I had a lot of figures to go over. Round up time, I hardly ever leave the home range. Then you don't know what's going on over at the Tomahawk. Going on? You mean Steve's up to some funny business again? Just answer me this. How do you split up your herd during the roundup? Well, three ways, of course. The cows and the calves are going to be branded. Ones are going to drive to market and the others. The Tomahawk crew are only splitting their herd in two. Just cutting out the cows and calves. And they aren't doing any branding at all. Only earmarking them, huh? Not even that. They'll have to. Well, they aren't doing it now. It looks to me as if they're getting a trail herd together as fast as they can. Well, what's the sense of it? Yeah, it will be a trail herd such as the West has never seen. You know how many heads steel has. Half of them would run the total to nearly 50,000. But they can't drive that many to market. Oh, no, not altogether. There's no trail crew can handle more than 5,000. They can split it up ten ways. But that would mean ten crews. And steel doesn't have that many men. He doesn't now, but he may be able to hire them. Well, not around here. Speed rode south last week. He did? And he rode a long way. So Sonno followed him, and he hasn't come back. There are plenty of men in San Antonio. Yeah. But I can't figure it out, though. Why would Steele want to sell 50,000 here? He's got plenty of grass and water. And I doubt if the buyers in Clarksville would... Would what? 50,000. $15 a head we're getting now. You're beginning to realize. That's $750,000. Why, a drive like that would break the market wide open. How many were you planning to sell this year? 1,000 head. And all the others in the basin? Outside of Steele, you mean? Yes. Well, altogether, we'll have about 6,000 head. And you've got to beat Steele to Clarksville. Or you won't get anything for them. Well, we hadn't planned on starting yet. Well, you've got to. Now, most of the small ranchers are over at the barn tonight, aren't they? Yeah, I guess so. Then go there. It'd be hard to convince them Steele's up to a trick like that. You aren't sure. That doesn't matter. They'll have to admit there's a chance of my being right. Yeah. And if there is, it means you have to act. I'll talk to them. I'll give it to them straight. We'll get a part of the herd started tomorrow morning. Sooner the better. Uh, someone just rode up. Yeah. Hello. You'll have news of Breed. Kima, Tommy. Me following your trail from camp. You had a long ride, Toto. Uh, and scout plenty tired. What did you find out? Breed go to San Antonio. Him hire many men. Maybe hundreds. You hear that, Terry? Then get here by morning. All men wear two guns. Many killer. That's the sort of men Breed would hire. Did you hear what he told them? Uh, Tonto here. Breed promised them get much money. But are they going to stay at the Tomahawk Ranch? No. Them drive big herd to Clarksville. A hundred men, Carrie. 
Steele has nearly that many working for him already. Do you need any more proof? I sure don't. Can you get all your cattle on the trail tomorrow? We can try. I'll make it to the bar in a half an hour. And when I get there, the party will be over. <laughs> You can't be too careful about this. You can't weed out your cattle the way you usually do. We got to move fast. All right. All right. Now, just make up your mind how many heads you want to send. Cut them out tonight and drive them to the flats along Banjo Creek. That's where we start from tomorrow morning. Right. Now, don't waste any time and talk. Get into your saddles and head for your home range throttle. Right. They're on to your game. What do you mean? Just what I said. I heard a lot of excitement at the Bar M Ranch. Of course it is. They was having a party, but they aren't any more. I can hear Jim Cherry talking to him. I saw him start riding away. What did he say? Almost word for word what you told the boys yourself. Yeah, the police have been blabbing it all over the range. Oh, they haven't. It was a lone ranger figured it out and passed the word along to Cherry. Besides that, the Indian, what's his name, uh, Tano, he followed Breed to San Antonio. Your new man will be here tomorrow morning. That's fine. It'll be too late. You might as well send him back. Cherry's herd will be on its way. They can start. I'd like to bet they never get to Clarksville. Huh? Now, listen to me. Listen close and get everything straight. Afterwards, you're going to climb aboard that mangy Cayuse you call a horse and hide tail for the roundup camp. By sunrise the next morning, the small ranch's herd was taking shape in the flats near Banjo Creek. Hard-riding cowboys hazed the wild longhorns into one great milling mass. Hours passed as they rounded up the strain. At last, the herd was quieted down. Terry was about to give the word to the drive to begin when an old ranger and Tonto raced up. Hey, there's no one heading on. Hey, we're all set to go. You'll have to wait. What's that? The U.S. 3,000 head moving already. They'll reach the pass before you can. Don't, Don, we'll have to wait until they get through. You can't start your drive until this afternoon. This is going to be bad. One herd in front of us, and he'll sure to start another moving as soon as he can. It's like being between two cars. Yes, Terry. It's 400 miles to Clarksville. There'll be trouble every foot of the way. <laughs> The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Right into yours. Leaping catches. Hold on, hold on, hold on. What did you find out, fellow? 
It's what you think. More cattle on way to pass now. And move plenty fast. They're coming through the pass tonight? Uh, We've got to go on, then. We've got to keep ahead of them. We can't go on. We've got to do something. Well, yeah, there's one way out. Name it. Drive your cattle to the east for 20 miles and follow the Merrick to Clarksville. That's twice as long. If we do that, we lose. You want your herd to be stampeded? You want to lose most of them? No, but the I... Merrick's can... your only trail and only chance. If you drive 20 miles a day, you can get to Clarksville first. 20 miles a day? If you stay here and try to drive through or around that herd up ahead, you'll never get there. Oh, gone, I guess you're right. Right! Swing that point to the right. We're heading east for the Merrick trail. <laughs> Three nights later, Steele and Breed were camped with one of their trail crews on Sandy Creek. The rancher was in a bad temper. Well, how's it check effect yet? I don't know, senor. He has gone since last night. He got the whistle. Uh, if he had done that, I would beat him off good. I tell him to locate the carry hog and report back at once. Yeah. Call me another cup of coffee. Let's uh, see. Uh, too bad they slip out of our trap. What did they gain by it? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> the magic trail is too long. We get to Clarksville first, and that is all you want. Mm. It's just the same. Just the same what? It's hard to forget the long range that rides with him. He's not a man to be trusted. Uh, give me that coffee. Mm, Hello! Oh, 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 well, where have you been? Just wait till I get my breath, I'll tell you. Why have you taken so long to ride a few miles? A few miles doesn't. I had to ride all the way to the Sweetwater before I caught up with him. Sweetwater? It's not possible. They could not have got that fast. They would have to drive 20 miles a day. That's just what they're doing. I never saw a trail herd move so fast. I followed him along the ridge for a while. That masked man was everywhere. You should have seen him. Eh? Twenty miles a day if they win. Yeah, that is so. You get to stop him. Tomorrow night, you'll take twenty of the best men you've got in San Antonio. Mm, he's clawed up. There may be storm tomorrow night. That ought to help. Just make sure that herd is scattered so they'll never be able to round it up again. See? That isn't all. From now on, we drive twenty miles a day ourselves. I'll pass the wait along. Herd was bedded down north with Sweetwater. Just before dawn, the Lone Ranger rode up to the dying campfire. Carrie was rolled up in his blanket beside it, sound asleep. Anyway, fella. Yeah. Carrie, Carrie. Uh, uh, uh. Huh? Oh, hello there. It's been five o'clock yet, is it? No, I've just been taking a look at the herd. Don't you ever sleep? I can't be much more sleep for any of us tonight. Oh, something wrong? Oh, storm. Uh. Yes, it'll break any minute. Cattle are getting restless. Well, I can hear them. You're night rider. What are they shouting for? There's no way to quiet cattle. Gunfire. You'll have sent some men after us. Roll out of your blanket, boy. boy. They've got a storm and a parcel of coyotes to deal with. Oh, Before the Lone Ranger reached the herd, the gunfire had stopped. In the flash of lightning, he saw a band of horsemen disappearing over the ridge. There was no time to follow them. The cattle were already milling, and at that moment, the storm broke in all its fury. Almost at once, the longhorn started to run before the driving rain. Jagged streaks of lightning cracked toward the earth. Great balls of fire played above the heads of the terror-stricken cattle. On they raised. A stampede. You keep the orders, man. All we can do is run with them. The storm left up. We try to turn the leaders. Keno! for ten miles before the last of the thunder rumbled away in the distance. And the Lone Ranger directed the cowboys in the desperate work of getting the herd under control once more. Hour after hour of hard riding followed. Sky clear. The sun rose high in the heavens. It was nearly noon and the last of the strays were rounded up and the herd was started back. Ten miles back to where we left the chuck wagon. You won't get there until dark. Whole day, Lord. Yes, yeah, Gary. I'd like to lay my hands on the skunks to start at the stampede. Yeah, back to their own herds by now. They just can't win, that man. Gary? Hey. They don't like you to give up. They know where we are. They know how far we've gone. That means they'll get along a lot faster themselves. Otto. Uh-huh. You and I are riding on to Clarksville. You're leaving us? Yes, Gary. We'll be back. No. Meantime, keep driving as hard as you can. Uh, come on, too. Uh, 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 well, we have three hours before dawn. Uh, Are you sure this is John Bennett's house? That's right. Well, his door won't be locked, so walk right in. There's a lamp on the table. Hey, he's there. What? Man, bring it in. You're covered, Bennett. I've had a call for help. Hey, what's the idea? Get into your clothes. You're leaving town with us. The 
was over two weeks later that Steele and Breed rode into Clarksville at the head of the first herd. There was no sign of Kerry, and the rancher congratulated himself. He walked along the main street toward John Bennett's office. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we put it off, Brady. I can't be quite a cut all this week. When Kelly shows up, he won't get a dime for his tears. Say, this is the place. Yeah. I know Penny will be surprised when you tell him how many heads on the way here. Yeah. Mr. Steele. Hello. Which was? You mean Mr. Bass? Yeah, where is he? I don't know. Nobody knows. He just disappeared about two weeks ago. Disappeared? Yeah. He left the office one night and went home, and the next day he wasn't anywhere to be found. Sheriff's had a posse looking for him. You must have found some trace. No, he didn't. He didn't say anything to anybody about leaving town, and we haven't had any word. Well, we don't know what happened to him. Well, I got 3,000 cattle down in the corral. They want to sell them. Well, there's other buyers in town. I can't. I think it's up to handle this deal. The 3,000 are only a start. Yeah, it's better we go to the sheriff, maybe. This deal goes wrong with the last minute, just because Bennett takes it into his head. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah, somebody stop us. Hey, it's Mr. Bennett. What kind of a yarn are you trying to make me swallow? I told the truth, but look who's with him. A masked man and an engine. You better get the sheriff. Hello, everybody. Let's meet you, Miss Bennett. Where have you been? You don't mind, man. I'd like you and Chandler to stick around a little while in case there's any trouble. Well, you'd be glad to. There won't be any trouble. Now, Steve, what can I do for you? Glad you've been. Oh, we're just taking a little business trip. Been uh, seeing an old friend of mine. That's a likely story. But he says you've been going two weeks. Yeah, that's right. Any objections? I, uh, want to talk to you alone. No, thanks. You've got anything to say, you better get it off your chest right now. All right. Want to sell some kettle? Uh-huh. About 50,000 head, isn't it? The man's man told you. He's told me a lot of things. Well, what did you give me for him? Market price, $15 a head. Have you gone local? Nope, well, $15 a head. I'll only buy $10,000. I'll wait. You'd take the whole 50 if I offered them to you at, uh, let's say, five. Ten thousand's all I can handle. <laughs> I've already bought six. You what? what? Yeah, from Jim Carrey. Rode out with a masked man and met him on the trail. Can you see That's it. I'll break you for this minute. Yeah, and how do you plan to do that? Yeah, I'll tell you how. I'll tell all my company other buyers around here. Five dollars. Two, one, I don't care. You'll never been able to get rid of that 6000 No sale, Steele. I'm talking for all the buyers in town. We'll take 10000 from you and not one yeah, more. That's a double cost. Yeah, it's a double, double cost, Brady. Yeah. You'll look up at it. I'm offering you a chance to make a fortune. You're turning it down. John Bennett doesn't figure the same way you do, Steele. I told him that you're trying to ruin every small rancher in Tomahawk Basin. If that happens, he knows he'll have to deal with you alone. Then I'll be the one to get ruined. No thanks, Steele. Hold us ranches, and we're going to stick together and play along with the small guys. The marketplace for beef stays where it is. What if we only sell 10,000 heads? What we do with other 40,000? You can rent some range land and winter them around here. Well, they sold them in the spring, I wouldn't make a cent. Right, Steve. That's that. It's cost you a lot of money. Let's go, Tonto. Uh, so long, Matt Smith. <laughs> I enjoyed the trip. You'll never regret your decision, Bennett. That's for you, Steve. You'll see that Jim Carrey's hurt gets here safely. And Tonto and I are riding back to the basin. We'll meet again. Yes, we'll meet again. And the next time, Breed, I promise you... The tables will be turned. Copyright feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.